Ahoy, students! Today we're going to look at more graphs of polynomial functions. At this point, we understand what the end behavior of a polynomial will look like. Now we need to figure out a bit of what happens in the middle of the graph. And this is going to require a little bit more examination. And specifically, we need to be looking at the zeros of the polynomial, which are the x values that give us a zero for the function value. So we have a bit of a statement that we need to look at, and then we're going to move on and start looking at some graphs. If p is a polynomial and c is a real number, then the following are equivalent. c is a zero of p. A zero of a polynomial is a value where when we plug that number in, we end up with zero as our output x equals c is a solution to the equation p of x equals 0, which is effectively saying the same thing. x minus c is a factor of the polynomial p of x, and also c is an x-intercept of the graph of p. I think for most people, the first, second, and third the fact that they're equivalent is generally not anything new. Um, the definition of a zero of a polynomial is that when you plug that number in for the polynomial, you end up getting zero. And we know that uh, when we have a function value of zero, that gives us an x-intercept because the x-intercepts occur when y equals zero. The thing that students generally aren't always as comfortable or familiar with is that if c is a zero of a polynomial or an x-intercept, that means that x minus c is a factor of the polynomial. And this is something that we're going to be using over the course of the next week and a half or so at various points, but I wanted to just say this up front so that we can recognize that all of these are equivalent to each other. Now what this means is that if we want to know the x-intercepts of a polynomial function, we need to just factor that polynomial function and that will give us the x-intercepts. So let's take a look at an example. Let's find the zeros of the polynomial f of x equals x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 6x squared. Now, we're going to want to factor this so that we can find the zeros. And we can start by factoring out a greatest common factor. All of these have x squared in common. So we'll pull out an x squared, and that leaves us with x squared plus x minus 6 as the leftovers. Then we need to try and factor the trinomial here, and we can try to use unfoiling. We need two numbers that have a product of negative 6 and a sum of 1. Those numbers are going to be positive 3 and negative 2. Now we can set each of these factors equal to 0 to solve. So x squared equals 0 x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. x squared equals 0 only has one solution, x equals 0. The only number we can square and end up with 0 is 0. The second one, if we subtract 3 from both sides, gives us x equals negative 3. And then the third equation, when we add 2 to both sides, gives us x equals 2. So these are the zeros of the polynomial. They're going to be the x-intercepts of the graph. And that's exactly what we're going to look at in the next video.